Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about the coronavirus, more specifically the novel coronavirus because this has been going around on the news, on social media, everybody's been talking about it, a lot of people are worried about it, so today we're going to be talking about some facts regarding this illness and also some ways to decrease your risk of getting it. Before we get started, I just wanted to introduce myself in case you're new to my channel. My name's Rihanna, I have been an ICU nurse for almost five years. I'm also graduating nurse anesthesia school in three months with my doctorate degree. So that's a little bit of my background. Before we get into it, I have to say this is not medical advice. This is just information I'm sharing from the CDC and the World Health Organization and reputable sources that I've read. So I'm just sharing this information that I know to help people understand this illness better. You might be wondering what exactly is a coronavirus? Well, it's actually a family of viruses and a lot of different viruses fall into this category. So these range anywhere from the common cold that you and I might get and be completely fine with just some mild symptoms to SARS and MERS, if you remember those from the past, and now the new novel coronavirus. Novel means new, so this is the first time this virus has been found in humans. Coronaviruses are zoonotic, which means they can transmit between animals and humans. The most common animals they're found in are cattle, cats, bats, and camels. I know that seems kind of random, but that's where they're found. So if you remember MERS, the Middle Eastern Respiratory Virus, that actually was found to have originated in camels. And SARS, the Sudden Acute Respiratory Syndrome related coronavirus, was found to have originated in cats. So they are not completely sure where this new novel coronavirus originated, but they do think that it originated in Wutan, China, and it has spread throughout China, and now it has spread globally. Let's talk about how the novel coronavirus spreads. So it spreads by droplet, which means if somebody sneezes, coughs, anything like that near you, and you breathe in the droplets, you're at risk for getting the virus. It can also spread by surface contact, so if somebody touches their mouth or coughs on something, and then you touch that surface, and then you touch your face, your mouth, your eyes, something like that, you are at risk for getting it. And people can be infectious even when they don't have signs or symptoms, they can still be a carrier. So you have to keep in mind that even people who are seemingly healthy can still infect you with the virus. Now this goes for a lot of different viruses, not just coronavirus. But I just wanted to mention that because a lot of people think only sick people can infect other people. The most common signs and symptoms of the coronavirus are cough, fever, shortness of breath, and respiratory distress. That's a more severe symptom. You can also have a sore throat and a runny nose like you could with a common cold. Well, now you might be thinking, that sounds scary. How can I decrease my risk of getting the novel coronavirus? There are several ways, and these actually prevent you from getting a lot of different viruses and illnesses. So first of all is wash your hands. That's so important all the time. It can protect you from all kinds of viruses, all kinds of sicknesses, and all kinds of germs you don't want in your body. So wash your hands with soap and water. Also, you can use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. If you are out on the go and you don't have access to wash your hands, that's also another good option. Another way you can protect yourself is by avoiding sick people. Now, this is a harder way because you don't always know that people are sick. And also make sure that you're handling and cooking your food with care, specifically dairy and meat. Or you can just not eat dairy and meat like me, and then you don't have to worry about that problem. But undercooked meat or contaminated dairy can also be a source of the virus. Now you know how to protect yourself, but how do you protect others? Because we always wanna help others after we help ourselves. So don't go out in public if you are sick. Wash your hands, use hand sanitizer on a normal basis, and don't go out in public if you are sick. I have to reiterate this one because it's such a common thing to keep with our work-based society to keep pushing through even when you're sick, to still go to work, to still take the kids to school, to still go grocery shopping, to still do all the things you need to do. Well, you don't wanna go out in public if you are sick because you can infect other people and spread this virus all around or any virus or any infection really. So it's just common courtesy, stay home, get some rest, use it as downtime, don't feel pressured to do something when you're sick and just relax and get better. So what happens if you do get the coronavirus? How do you get cured or treated? Well, there is no cure and there is no treatment for the coronavirus specifically. There is supportive treatment. So if you go to the hospital, you might get oxygen, IV fluids, breathing treatments, things like that depending on exactly what your symptoms are. But as of now, there is no vaccine because it's a newer virus and it takes years to make a vaccine and there is no definitive treatment. That might sound kind of scary, but that is the case with a lot of viruses. Now there are some antivirals such as Tamiflu for the flu, but for many viruses, there is no treatment and you just have to wait it out. Contrary to popular belief, 
Antibiotics do not work on viruses. They only work on bacterial infections. So if you have a cold or a virus and you wonder why your doctor doesn't put you on antibiotics, it's because they will not help you. The only thing they will do is hurt you in the long term because they can cause resistance to antibiotics, which is bacterial resistance, and bacteria can mutate and infections can become harder to cure in the future. I absolutely love to travel, so I wanted to look up the travel recommendations right now by the CDC and the World Health Organization and see if they have any restrictions or recommended restrictions on travel. And right now they are recommending that all non-essential travel to China be canceled. So they recommend that if you don't absolutely have to go to China, that you do not go. If you absolutely have to go during this time period, I recommend washing your hands very often, using hand sanitizer when you can't wash your hands, and maybe even wearing a mask in public. Help keep your immune system up by drinking fluids, eating healthy food, and getting enough rest. Those are three simple things that you can do to help yourself just feel better overall and to help your immune system be super active. Now that we've talked about all the scary stuff about the novel coronavirus, I wanted to talk about some not so scary stuff. Well, actually it's scary in a different way, but I wanted to tell you about the stats comparing the flu or the influenza that we deal with every single season to the novel coronavirus. So you'd be surprised to know that the flu is actually way worse than the novel coronavirus statistically. I got these stats from the CDC yesterday. So by the time you watch this video, they might've changed a little bit. Just keep that in mind while I'm telling you. Currently, 9,826 people have been infected with the novel coronavirus. First is the influenza, which has infected over 19 million people. That is an insane difference. Now comparing the death rates from the coronavirus to the flu, 213 people have died from the coronavirus. And this season from the flu, over 10,000 people have died. So another huge difference. Also keep in mind that if you live in the US, only six people have been confirmed to be infected with the novel coronavirus. I'm sure that number will keep rising as it spreads, but that's compared to the thousands and thousands of people who have been hospitalized and infected with the influenza this season. The elderly and small children are more risk than healthy younger people. The elderly tend to have more complications from these diseases and not recover as well but that doesn't mean that young people can't have the same issues. Before I end this video, I just wanted to say that this is not meant to make you scared. It's meant to make you informed. Knowledge is power. So the more knowledge you have, the more power you have over your health, your life, and knowing what's going on in the world. Be careful listening to the news and social media because a lot of it can kind of be fear mongering and it can just propel fear and it can sound a lot worse than it really is. As you just saw, the influenza affects and kills way more people than the novel coronavirus, but we typically see the influenza so we're more used to it. The coronavirus is something new at least new to us, the novel coronavirus. So it sounds more scary. It's all over the news. They say it originated in China. They say, be careful with your travel. It's just all very scary, but really traveling with the influenza going around is just as scary and you need to follow the same precautions. There's a lot you can do to protect yourself. There's a lot you can do to protect others and you don't need to be scared every day when you go outside your house. I'm just here to share the information with you and the sources I use will be linked below in the description if you want to read them for yourself. Themselves. So I'm gonna link below the CDC, the World Health Organization, and any other sources that I used to make this video. That being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative and helpful, and I hope it helped alleviate some of your anxiety regarding the novel coronavirus. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave your comments below what your thoughts are about the huge difference between the influenza and the coronavirus infection rates and death rates. My thoughts go out to everybody who has been affected by the coronavirus and influenza this season and any other illness or disease in general. Nobody wants to be sick. Nobody wants to see family members be sick. I'm sorry for everybody who lost somebody related to these illnesses. And hopefully as healthcare progresses, we get better at treating them. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. And remember, wash your hands.